been through. Use it for your glory, and Lord, I offer my days to you, lifting my praise to you as a pleasing sacrifice. Lord, I offer you my life. Sing it.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let us pray. You are Yahweh. Hey, hey, hey. you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Hey, hey, hey. you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Alpha Omega. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Alpha, Omega. you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, hey, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, hey, you are Yahweh. Oh Lord, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega. You are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega. Open your mouth and begin to worship the King of Kings. Father, we just want to thank you. We bless your name. You are Yahweh, you are the Alpha, you are the Omega, you are the beginning, you are the ending, you are the Almighty, you are the Prince of Peace, you are the Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Days, the Bright and Morning Star. Father, we give you praise, we give you all glory, we give you all honor, adoration, we lift your name high above every other name. Thank you, our Father, thank you, my Lord, thank you, my King, blessed, blessed be your holy name. Receive all glory, receive all honor and adoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And so, Lord, we want to thank you tonight. We commit this uh, service into your hands. Holy Spirit, we ask that you take control and speak to us. Wherever we are, oh Lord, speak to us according to our needs. And at the end of this service, Lord, please let every one of us have a testimony. We thank you because you always hear us and you will hear us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, tonight we are going to talk on the topic, put your faith into action. And uh, because it's faith clinic, and we need to really know what this faith clinic means. And so we need to put our faith into action. It's not only coming for faith clinic and we don't have the faith. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's take our Bible reading from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. As we go on, we'll be reading some other Bible passages. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we need to really know what faith is. Because every time we say we are having faith clinic, faith clinic. And uh, you know that when you go to the hospital, you see the doctor. And the doctor will examine you. And um, he will diagnose some things in your life. Maybe you have headache. And the um, headache is caused by something. And maybe you have stomach ache. It's caused by something. So when he diagnose and he will give you the right medication, and he will tell you, take it one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one in the night, after meal. Some it will be before meal. And you will have the faith. Ah, you will go home rejoicing that the doctor has diagnosed uh, the problem in your life, and then in your, in, in your body. And then you will go home, and you judiciously take those medication, believing what the doctor said. And tonight, we want to believe, we want to put our faith in the, on the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one that controls everything. Amen? Amen. He says, it is the substance of things hoped for. So faith and hope goes together. And the same thing that are in the object of hope are the object of our faith. When you talk of faith, you always talk of hope. 
Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing what? The word of God. And when you go to the hospital, what do you hear? What do you, what do you want to hear? You want to hear what the doctor says. You don't just go to the hospital and uh, you look for anything. You, you are listening to the doctor. You pay attention to him. The doctor will say, oh, how do you feel? What is your problem? What is your challenge? How do you feel? What is, it? How, what is, how do you, what is the problem in your life? What, what is it that you are feeling? Is it headache? Are you having stomach pain? You will say, oh, doctor, my head. Is, he will ask you which side. Is it the, the front frontal headache or back or the middle of the head? He will ask you all this just to examine you to know what to do. And then you are, list, is, you are listening to the doctor to what he will say. And finally, the doctor said, okay, this is what you are going to do. So you heard the doctor very well and you went home. And you decide to obey the doctor. So whatever you hear will set you free. Praise the name of the Lord. So faith comes by hearing. And today we are going to hear the word of God. Because it's the ultimate. It's what will set us free. So the faith we have will give us victory. Faith, we say, it is the evidence of things that you cannot see. The evidence of things that you don't see. Something you don't see, and but you are going to see the evidence if you put your trust in that thing. Praise the name of the Lord. So if we said that faith demonstrates to the eye of the mind. It demonstrates to the eye of the mind the reality of those things that cannot be discerned by the eye of the body. I want us to mark that word. Faith demonstrates to the eye of the mind. The eye of the mind is the mind, the one you cannot see. It demonstrates to the eye of the mind the reality of those things that cannot be discerned by the eye of the body. So you begin to see things, you begin to visualize something that you have not even seen. And you believe in it. The Bible said, call things that be that, that, the things that be not as though they are, and they will come to pass. Praise the name of the Lord. So you don't see those things, but you believe that when you call, those things will come to pass. And tonight, we are in the presence of God. We're going to have faith in his word. In whatever God said we should do, we believe in him. Because he created the world. So we need to believe in him who created the world and created you. And knows everything about you. So we're going to say that faith without action will, is, will be ineffective. It cannot have any effect at all. When you say you have faith and you don't put that faith into action, you will just be wasting your time. Praise the name of the Lord. Your faith should be reflected in your actions. If you believe God's word, you need to demonstrate your faith by acting out on what you believe. And that is why the book of James chapter 1 verse 22, James chapter 1 verse 22, it says, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So, and then 23 says, For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholded himself, and goeth his way and straightway forgetted what manner of man he was because when you see yourself when you you stand in, in the mirror and you look at yourself the next moment when you leave you forget all that what was there what you saw in yourself you are thinking of some other thing so that is what the bible is saying so our faith must go with action Hearing a word is for you to do what the word says. It is not you just hearing it and you don't put the word into action. If you go to a doctor and the doctor tells you, when you get back home, please, you must go to bed by 6 o'clock or you must take your medication by 6 o'clock. 
and you are just listening and you went back home and by six o'clock you did not take your medication and then by me by nine o'clock you said look let me take it it will not have the same effect they know what they are doing and that is why whatever you hear will set you free if you act on that thing that you hear it will definitely set you free praise the name of the lord the most attentive and the most frequent hearing of the word of god will not avail us anything unless we do what the word says no matter how many times you hear the word no matter how often you hear the word you go to church you listen to the word and you come back home you don't put it into practice definitely that word will have no effect in you and that is why when you hear the word you have to put it into practice whatever god is speaking to you or saying about for example let's look at it look at today people are we have what we call the Uber, the Karim, and so on and so forth. If you hear your friend said, oh, there is an application that um, you can use to call a taxi, and the taxi will come straight into your house, and then it will pick you to wherever you are going. You heard, somebody told you, and then you did not download the application or maybe assuming you downloaded the application you heard and you downloaded the application and then it comes to the time that you needed a taxi you just uh, you just said that oh the, the application is there the taxi should work but did you hear what your friend said he said well, after downloading the application he gave you instruction he showed you the procedure on how you can get this taxi if you did not do it the taxi will still be standing there and you will be sitting in your home. You'll be expecting the taxi to come and pick you, but it will not pick you. So when you hear something, you act on that thing that you hear. Praise the name of the Lord. So if you don't act on it, then you don't have faith on what you heard. Some people will hear something because they don't believe in it. They don't work. They won't, they, they won't act on it. That means you don't have faith on what you say. Like God spoke to Abraham. If Abraham did not believe God, he would not take action. And that is why God says, because Abraham believed God, God counted it for him as righteousness. See, when we believe God and believe his word, you will begin to see something happening. For example, the word of God says in Psalm 34 verse 15, psalm 34 verse 15 he said the eyes of the lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry there is an action to be taken here for god to listen to your cry when you look at that word he said the eyes of the lord are upon the righteous if you look at verse 16 he said the, 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 the eyes of the Lord uh, uh, the eyes of the Lord is against the wicked. Now, if the eyes of God are upon the righteous and he hears their cry, now what do you suppose to do for God to hear your cry? That means you need to look at this word. You have seen it. Some people will ignore it and then they will continue in their sin. They will not accept Jesus Christ so that they will get that righteousness. Then they will begin to cry when you see people praying and you join them to pray. And the people will receive answer. You don't receive your answer. You said God is wicked. No, you did not take action on the word you heard. You did not believe in that word. You did not put that word into action. Two of but two people sat down and they heard the word. Said the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And they listened to their cry. Oh, that's good. And then one person went home, and it, or the person came out from, uh, and gave his or her life to Christ. And then he went back home and cried to God on the same thing that two of you were looking for. And then that person received his job. And then you went to him, he said, oh boy, how did you do it? He said, oh, I prayed. He said, but I also prayed. He said, but you listened to what the pastor said? He said, but yes, I heard. He said, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. But do you take action on it? One person took action, the other person did not take action. So if you have faith, faith took you to the church. 
that oh when i go to the church i will hear something but you heard it you did not take action so you can see that faith without action is nothing it will not work praise the name of the lord mm -hmm. so faith without proper action is ineffective look at james chapter 2 verse 17 James chapter 2, verse 17. He said, Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead, being alone. The word works there means corresponding action. Faith goes with action. So when you visit a doctor to complain of headache, you would, like I said, you will listen to the doctor. And the doctor said, when you go home, take this medication, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one in the night. And then he said, you will be healed. Praise the name of the Lord. I listened to a story of a preacher about, um, about 20 something or 30 years ago, if I'm not mistaken. He came to minister to us and then the man was still alive after, after I think after seven years when he came to minister. He said he went to the doctor and the doctor diagnosed something which I can't remember now. And he said, well, there's something they can do in the next um, 30 days, you will have to die. He said, uh, what we can do is to give you some strong painkillers. And as long as you take those painkillers, you will be delivered or you will be free from the pain. But there is nothing we can do in 30 days' time. You will have to go. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Then this man said, as he went back home, he will be taking those medication. As long as he obeyed the word of the doctor, one in the morning after meal, one in the afternoon, he said, the pains will go. Then suddenly he said, oh my God, if this doctor Give, tells him that this medication will take away the pain. And true, the pain is gone. He said, what of the word of God? Then he went home. He said, okay, he abandoned the drugs. He said, I will test my God. I will have faith in the word of God. He opened to the book of Peter. Whenever he wants to take his meal, in the morning when he's taking his breakfast, he will say, the doctor said, when I want to take my meal, I will take the drug, take my water, and put it in my mouth and swallow it. Okay, now I'm going to abandon this medication. So when he finished his breakfast, after taking his breakfast, he will open his, the Bible. And he said, Dr. Jesus, I want to take your own medication, not the medication of the doctor anymore. So he opened the Bible to first Peter. Chapter, 20, chapter 2, verse 24. He's holding his water in his hand. He will read. He said, Christ carried our sins in his body on the cross. He did this so that we will stop living for sin and, and live for what is right. By his wounds, like King James said, by his stripe, I am healed. He will drink his water. He did that in the morning. He did that in the afternoon, just like the doctor was saying. And he said, after 30 days, when he came to minister to us, I think it was about seven years, he said, look, my friend, I'm still alive and well. Praise the name of the Lord. You will open your mouth and say, Father, Father increase my faith. Increase open your mouth and begin to pray. Tell God to die. Father, increase my faith. Lord, let me have faith in you. Lord, let me not just hear the word. Let me not just listen to the word. Let me believe in your word. Increase my faith so that I will be receiving my blessings through your word. Father, thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. From today, I want you to have faith in the word of God. Brethren, there is power in the word. If you begin to believe in his word, it will work in your life. And he said that some people believe, but the thing is that there are certain things they need to do. Like when Jesus was healing the man, 
that was sick. He said, go and sin no more. Sin in your life can stop the, the word of God from working in your life. And so we will talk about that before we close. Amen? Let's look quickly at three examples of faith in the scriptures. Three examples of faith in the scripture. Number one, we are looking at the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5, 28 to 34. Mark chapter 5, 28 to 34. This woman, according to the scriptures, suffered for 12 good years and there was no solution. Then she heard about Jesus. See, when you hear, you act on what you hear. Just like blind Bartimaeus, he heard that Jesus was passing. Blind Bartimaeus cannot see. But he heard. And when he heard, he said, my friend, what, what is happening? People are making noise here. I can hear people. He said, oh, Jesus Christ. Of and he has been hearing of this Jesus that he can heal. He said, no way. Jesus is passing today. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. They said, shut up, my friend. Even me, myself, I'm having my own case. Why are you making noise? You cannot even see him. Because others were looking for Jesus to heal him. Too. They said, shut up. He shouted again, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still, he said, call him. He said, yeah, come and go. He's calling you. You have disturbed us now. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is how he received. He had faith. Look at this woman with issue of blood for 12 years. She heard about Jesus. How did she receive her faith? By hearing. Look at Mark chapter 5, 26 to 27, and then we'll read 34. Mark chapter 5, 26. He said, and had suffered many things of many physicians. She has been going from one physician, from one doctor to the other. Just like that man I told you. The doctor has concluded. He said, my friend, there's nothing you can do. You will die in 30 days. But the man decided to go back to Jesus. Today, your case is settled in the name of Jesus. Amen. But you need to go back to Jesus. You need to go back to him and tell him, Lord, I am sorry. He can heal you of that ailment. And had spent all that she had. This woman must have been very, very rich. Her money could not save her. Her money could not set her free. And was nothing better. There was no result. But rather, it grew worse. You can see, money cannot... Even doctors, there are times the doctors cannot help you. But there is only one doctor that can save you. That is Dr. Jesus. Tonight... I want you to stand on your feet and shut up, open your mouth and say, Father, Father every sickness in my body, the ones I know and the ones I don't know, please Lord heal me tonight. By your stripes, let me receive healing. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Whatever it is that is in your body, that Lord heal that woman. Twelve years she suffered. Doctors could not heal her. But by the power and the strength of Jesus, you will receive our healing. Oh Lord, let us receive our own tonight. We have faith in you. We have faith in your word. We are hearing the word now. It is the word we are hearing. That is why we are acting on it by praying, by believing that you are going to heal me. Jehovah God, let me have a testimony tonight. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Now, look at verse 27. He says, when she had heard of Jesus. Do you see that? She didn't only just hear. Because Jesus was physically around. She didn't just hear about Jesus and sit in, and sit in her house and say, well, if you like, let him come to me. I think he's, he's going around. He's supposed to come to my house. When she had heard about Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. Praise the name of the Lord. You see that action the woman took? She has heard about Jesus. She had faith and said, no, I have to put this faith into action. Let me go. And wherever, she struggled, struggled until she got the way Jesus was and touched the hem of her, his garment. Look at what Jesus said in verse 34. Verse 34. He said, and he said unto her, daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. 
praise the name of the Lord. I pray for somebody tonight. Whatever you are passing through, receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number two, I'm going to look at the centurion servant. The centurion servant. The centurion with a servant that was paralyzed and tormented can be found in Matthew chapter 8, verse 5 to 13. Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 to 13. See, this centurion met Jesus. He has heard about him. He left his duty post. He said, let me go and see this Jesus. Because my, my servant is paralyzed. He decided to go there and met with Jesus. He requested for Jesus to come to his house. And he, he said, Jesus, can you heal my servant for me? Praise the name of the Lord. And then Jesus said, okay, I will follow you to your house. He said, by the way, Jesus, no, 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 no. no. I don't think you should come to my house. You see, I am a man of authority. I have soldiers. I call this one and say, come, and he comes. This one, go, and he goes. I say, do this, and they will do it. He said, you have your authority. Just speak the word. Praise the name of the Lord. And in verse 10, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed him, verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Jesus just spoke the word. And by the time he got home, his servant was healed. I stand by the power in the word of God. That God said his word would not return to him void. You are listening to me right now. And whatever you are passing through, I speak to that thing. Let it give way now in the name of Jesus. If you are sick, the Lord is going to heal you tonight in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Number three. The men who tore the roof. I love those men. They had faith for, me, for, the, for their friends. Amen. The men that tore the roof of a house to get a sick man to Jesus so that he could be healed. That can be found in Mark chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. Mark chapter 2, 1 to 5. See, these four men, they had faith for their friend. They have heard about Jesus. And they said, why do we leave this, our friend, to die here? This Jesus is somewhere. Let us go. I know the place. Let us go and take, let's take him there. Oh, may God give you friends that will care for you in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. They carried him and they took him to the place. And when they got there, there was no place for them to enter. The door was jam-packed, was locked. And they looked and looked and said, wow, how do we get to, to this place? How are we going to enter? Praise the name of the Lord. I remember a man many years ago that came into the camp back in Nigeria. And uh, the man came and miracles was happening in the, in the camp. So the man was very short. And he was still, people were looking. The man said, I wish I am told to look at what is going on. And you know, as he was still thinking about that, suddenly the word came from the general Basia's mouth. He said, there is a man somewhere there. You are trying to look at and to see. And you are saying, God, I wish I was tall. He said, look at your trouser. Your trouser is has jumped. Meaning that the man became taller immediately. God can perform miracle. I know of one of our pastors who was mistaken for arm robber and the police were pursuing arm robbers and suddenly the arm robbers escaped and the police shot him. The bullet, he brought the bullet, the shirt that he wore that day. Bullet penetrated from the front and at the back, he came out. But the pastor was alive. Praise the name of the Lord because it was not his time to die. I pray for somebody tonight. The miracle that you are looking for, you will receive it tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every bullet of the enemy that, is been, that has been sent to you, it will not kill you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because you are fearfully and wonderfully created in the image of God. It is not your time to die. You will not die in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And then, Mark chapter 2 verse 5. Let's look at Mark chapter 2 verse 5. When Jesus saw how much faith they had, he said to the paralyzed man, young man, your sins are forgiven. Praise the name of the Lord. You can see, there are things, there are certain sickness that is caused by sin. 
and as such we must deal with that as soon as possible praise the name of the lord then in that same mark chapter 2 verse 11 same mark chapter 2 verse 11 and 12 he said i say unto thee arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thy house before that time when you read from verse 5 or 6 down you will see where people were the pharisees were arguing how can this man say that is is forgiving sin how can who, who gave him the right to forgive sin praise the name of the lord and jesus went ahead and said my friend carry your mat and go home praise the lord and immediately he arose took up the bed and went forth before them all in so much that they were all amazed for what god is going to do in your life people will see you they will be amazed in the name of jesus Amen. see god can change that your leg God can give you a new leg. God can give you a new hand. God can give you something new. Even he can give you a new kidney. No matter what has damaged in your life, he is the creator. He knows. Praise the name of the Lord. For God's sake, I am an engineer. I repair machines for many years. There are times when we are going, we are, we are checking for the fault on the machine. We check, we test and test and test. And we discover that something one particular component is bad. What we do is that we just know that the company is bad. We just uh, call the store. Do you have such and so component in the store? He said, yes, we have it, sir. So, okay, give me one. And they bring, we just take that off and we fix that one. And we start the machine. We started working again. This is what I was trained to do. How much more the owner of your body who has all the parts in his storehouse. I speak to somebody tonight. Mm -hmm whatever has damaged in your life whatever the doctor has said that it cannot be mended that no medication can repair it tonight receive a brand new one in the mighty name of jesus look brethren let us begin to put our faith into action because god is the one that created you if only you believe in his word tonight somebody will receive a miracle in the name of jesus praise the name of the lord and immediately he arose took up his bed and went forth before them all in so much that they were all amazed and glorified god saying we never saw it on this fashion somebody when your own you will come people will say ah, we have never seen god this way and they will come to worship that your god in the name of jesus Amen. so these friends did not just hear but they put what they had into action by moving forward by taking their friends to see jesus if you want the word of god to work for you put it into action act on the word of god the word of god says if you decree a thing it shall be established that you sit down you don't take it you don't make a decree you have to decree that thing to come to pass so you said okay pastor i need i want to decree this thing i want to begin to have faith in god where do i start from you will start from Romans chapter 10 from verse 9. Romans chapter 10 from verse 9. He says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Do you see that? You need to put this word you are hearing into action. He said you will be saved. And in verse 10, he said, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Praise the name of the Lord. This is the word of God. So when you make that confession, when you believe in this word, and you go into action by confessing Jesus, then you will be saved. Praise the name of the Lord. Then when you go to verse 11, he said, for the scripture said, whosoever believeth on him shall not be shamed, shall not be put to shame. Today I decree, every shame in your life will be taken away in the name of Jesus. Every shame in your life will be taken away in the name of Jesus. So you start believing and confessing Christ and every shame will go. This is exactly where you have to start. From. When you decree, when you confess Jesus, and the next step you begin to deal with those things that have been controlling you and you begin to speak the word of god you see it come to pass brethren we were all sinners before 
And when we repented and we started speaking the word, the word started obeying us. I want you, wherever you are right now, if you want to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, because when you, so that when you pray, God will answer you. This is a great opportunity for you. Your faith cannot work if you don't agree with the owner of the faith, with the person who can really give you what you want in life, and that is Jesus. I want you, wherever you are, and you want to give your life to Jesus, I want you to repeat this word after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I've come to you. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I am sorry for my sins. I repent from today. And I've made up my mind that you are my Savior. Please come into my heart and forgive me all my sins. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And so, Father, I thank you for those of your children, wherever they are right now, that have surrender their life to you i plead for mercy lord please have mercy and forgive them father in any way that they have committed any sin i beg for mercy in judgment remember mercy remember your word that says that if they confess they will not be put to shame today lord let there be a new beginning in their life in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray so tonight the first prayer you are going to pray to put your faith into action, you are going to ask God to remove every shame. You know, shame comprises of so many things. Shame comprises of when you are looking for something to do and it cannot work. You go to places where other people have gone and succeeded and you go there, they will tell, turn you back. It will be shameful. You look for jobs, you cannot get it. You come to the foreign land where others are making it, you cannot make it. You are going to open your mouth and say, Father, from today, take away every shame from my life, from my family. I begin to pray. Tell God, take away every shame. Whatever constitutes shame in my life, Father, take it away in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray right now. Tell God, I don't want everything called shame in my life. Take it away, Lord, because I am a child of God from today. I am born again. I am a new creature. Lord Jesus, because your word says, if I confess that you will forgive me, tell God tonight, Lord, take away every shame from my life and let me be new in all that I do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, Father, Father from, tonight, from tonight, when I call on you, please answer me. Please answer Open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, Say, God, from tonight, when I call, please answer, because I am a new creature. I am a new person. When I call, please answer. Please, Lord, do not abandon me. I have decided to follow you. I have decided to come to you. Lord God Almighty, have mercy. Don't leave me alone, O oh God. Don't leave me alone, O oh God. Touch me, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Matthew 28, verse 18, he said, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Praise the name of the Lord. The Greek word power is also translated as authority. Authority is given to Jesus. And this authority was transferred to us. When Jesus was given the authority, he transferred the authority to us. Praise the name of the Lord. And when you look at Mark chapter 16, verse 16, Mark 16, verse 16 and 17, it says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs, mark that word, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name 
shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Verse 18. He said they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Praise the name of the Lord. When you go down to Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Luke chapter 10, verse 19, he said, I have given power. I have given power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and over every power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt me. You are going to open your mouth now and say, Father, every enemy, everything that constitutes himself to be serpents in my life, today, tonight, I bind your power in my life. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Tell God, no power of darkness has right in my life. I stand by the authority that you have given to me as your child tonight. And I decree that every satanic and evil power working against me, tonight I destroy your power. You don't have any authority in my life anymore. I am fearfully and wonderfully created. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Isaiah, this is the last prayer we are going to pray tonight. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 14. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 14. He said, In righteousness shalt thou be established. Amen. Thou shalt be far from oppression. Amen. For thou shalt not fear and from the terror, for it shall not come near thee. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. As a Christian, ha, oppression is not meant to, to be yours. Oppression should be far away from you. Because the Lord said the oppression will be far away from you. This is God's plan and purpose for you all. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. When you look at Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 7, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 7, it says, Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. From here, one can deduce that a man can only lay claim to wisdom when he is not oppressed. Praise the name of the Lord. So God is telling you that those who oppress you, they will eat their own flesh and they will drink their own blood. And no power can stand against you. Praise the name of the Lord. You are going to open your mouth and say, Father, anything that has been oppressing me in the past years, Lord Jehovah God, let me become their oppressors now. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lord, begin to oppress them because you said in your word, the oppressors, they will eat their own flesh. Let them begin to eat their own flesh. Let them begin to drink their own blood. Lord, enough is enough for me to be oppressed. What is that thing that is oppressing you? Today you want to give your life to Christ. Today you have, you have surrendered your life to Christ. You go back and that thing is still oppressing you. Tell God tonight, I am free from it. Let them begin to eat their own flesh and drink their blood. Deliver us, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. In Jesus' name, we pray. And so, Lord, I want to pray for each and every one of us tonight. Wherever we are, in our homes, in our offices, on the road, in your cars, driving home, Lord, I commit all your children into your hands. And I pray those that have been oppressed, by their enemies, by one thing or the other. Tonight, we are free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever has caged you, this night, receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I pray that, oh Lord, that after this prayer, let many have testimonies. Amen. And at the end, Lord, the glory will go back to you and the blessing will be ours. Amen. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let somebody there shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So I will see you all on Saturday during our celebration service. God bless you and have a good day. Amen.
heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. For you are. Use it for your glory and glory. 